mentioned was what what inspired you to write this book? Well, I'm a scientist and I've been studying um, drug resistance and infectious diseases in Nigeria and working closely with people who worked in clinics and hospitals and seeing that the tools that we were using for our research were so simple and if they were applied to patient care that patients would get better quality of care. And who, are, who is your audience for, the, for this book? Um, it's a whole mixture. It ranges from scientists who I would like to appreciate that there can be more applications of what they do in healthcare, as well as health policy makers who I'd hope will understand that the things that we need to improve healthcare are actually very simple. You know, very often when people hear it's a scientific innovation or something, then they get the impression that, well, something's technical and expensive, whereas there are lots of cheap tests that can be used to improve healthcare. So it's a mixture of scientists and policy makers and anybody really who's interested in infectious disease in, in, in Africa. And what are examples of some of these simple and not expensive and not technically high-tech solutions you've mentioned? So, for example, um, if somebody has a headache and fever, they could have, if, if they're in, in, in malaria endemic Africa, they could have malaria, they could have typhoid, they could have the flu, they could have a, several of other um, infectious diseases. We can diagnose malaria now with a rapid diagnostic test that is just like a pregnancy test. It's very, very simple to use. And if somebody has a fever, the way you're going to treat malaria is different from the way you're going to treat typhoid, it's different from the way you're going to treat the flu, and most of these things could potentially kill the patient. And the so, wrong treatment? The wrong treat the, not the wrong treatment, but the, no the treatment, illness, actually. The illness could kill the patient, and so you want to be able to treat the patient quickly. There's a rapid diagnostic test that you could use that within 20 minutes would tell you, this patient has malaria or this patient doesn't have malaria, and that would influence the type of treatment that you would offer. And what what... What needs to happen to put, uh, obviously these things are not in place, they're not easily available is what, is what you're saying. Um, what, why is that? Why are they not? Um, some of it is, is costs. Um, these days there's been a lot of contribution to healthcare in Africa from the outside and a lot of the donors are, uh, are paying attention to supplying medicines and if they would supply diagnostics with medicines, those medicines would get used better and in a more cost effective way. So some of it is money, some of it is health professionals in Africa actually who have been struggling along without these diagnostics and who are now used to that and so changing the mindset and letting them know these things are affordable, these things can be used. So it's a mixture of resources as well as changing the mindset of policymakers and people who are practicing medicine in Africa.